You are welcome to the GMAT 41's chemistry class. Today I'll be teaching you the topic mass mole volume relationship. We're going to deal with the stoichiometry of chemical reactions. And this is actually part one of stoichiometric study. We're still going to deal with part two, where we'll focus on volumetric analysis, that is titration aspect, okay? What is stoichiometry of a reaction? The stoichiometry of a reaction is the mole ratio in which reactants combine and products are formed. If you take your mind back to our class when I taught you balancing of chemical equation, you would recall where we introduced certain unknown values, variables. Usually I used either x, y, or z and then we will calculate using the knowledge of simple equation to obtain the value of these x or y or z those values are actually the number of moles okay for the given chemical reaction and then we balance these reactions looking at the reactant and the product so the more ratio in which these reactants react and then product are formed is what we refer to as stoichiometry of the reaction. As we move on into dealing with stoichiometry of a reaction, there are some IUPAC conventions, that is International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry Conventions, and their units that you are expected to know. Some of them we've treated already, and so we'll focus more on the new ones introduced here. Please, come with me as we look at these on the board. Quantities, symbols and their units. We talk about the mass. Mass, we already treated that in previous classes. We've talked about it. The symbol is small letter n and then the unit is gram or kilogram. But take note, the SI unit of mass is kilogram. We already discussed that in physics under quantities and their units. But when dealing with chemistry and its calculation, most times mass is quoted in the unit, is given in the unit of gram. Now, if it is necessary, based on the information given to us in the question, we can convert from that gram to kilogram by dividing the given gram by 1,000. That is, if it is necessary. Now, we look at molar mass. We've treated these also in previous classes and then soft questions on it. The symbol is capital letter M and the unit is grams per mole. Remember, per, that word really means the uh, division when you translate to mathematics. So grams per mole is gram divided by mole. Gram is the unit of mass. Then mole is the unit of amount or number of moles. So molar mass, just like you learned from previous classes, grams per mole means that the formula is going to be mass divided by uh, the number of moles. And now we have volume. Volume has a symbol V and then the unit is cubic centimeter or cubic decimeter. That is cubic cm or cubic dm. Sometimes we also pronounce it as cm cube or dm cube. Please take note that cm cube or dm cube is not the SI unit of volume. It's not the SI unit. They are smaller units of volume. The SI unit of volume is actually n raised to the power 3. That is cubic meter or meter cube as we choose to call it. One can actually convert from this cm cube or dm cube to cubic meter when necessary. It's just that in studying chemistry and its calculation, volume is usually given in the unit of cm cube or dm cube. And I'll be focusing on that. So let me just wipe off this meter cube. It's important for you to take note of this place. Okay? Centimeter cube, that unit has the same value as milliliter that is ml that's why here we have 1000 cm cube is equal to 1000 ml so they are the same in terms of the value so if i give you one cm cube it is equal to one ml one milliliter and then in terms of dm cube okay one liter is the same as one dm cube so you see they have the same value so if i give you five liters how many dm cube will it be five dm cube that's very correct now we are moving on to the next quantity, amount, also known as mole. We encountered this in previous classes. We use the symbol n, small letter n for it, and the unit is mole. Let us talk about mass concentration. 
we use the symbol P. The unit is grams per dm cube. Grams per dm cube. Gram is the unit of mass. Dm cube, the unit of volume. Now, if you have per, that simply means that mass concentration has the formula as given by equation one here. That is the mass divided by volume. Mass divided by volume. Then we talk about molar mass. That is molar concentration, rather. We talk about molar concentration as another quantity. We use the symbol C for it. And molar concentration has a unit mole per dm cube. And so we expect the formula to be number of moles or amount divided by volume. Equation 2 gives us the formula. Is that okay? But apart from mole divided by volume or amount divided by volume, molar concentration can still be expressed in the formula mass concentration P divided by molar mass. So you take note of that, okay? Let us look at the next uh, quantity here, which is Avogadro's constant. It has the symbol L, and unit is per mole. We already uh, saw the value of Avogadro's number or constant in previous classes, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Avogadro's number is equal to number, capital letter N, divided by amount or mole, small letter N. This number, N, capital letter N, does not have any units. Take note of that. What do we even mean by this number? I may give you maybe an element or a substance and tell you that, okay, this substance contains 1.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles. That number of particles is simply the number of that atom. At standard temperature and pressure, what volume will one mole of a gas occupy? Now we have here that one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure or at standard temperature and volume, STP or STV respectively. One mole of a gas will occupy this volume, 22.4 dm cube. To change from this dm cube to cm cube, simply multiply this 22.4 dm cube by 1000 and that will give you 22,400 cm cube. You need to take note of that value place. One mole of a gas always occupy that volume. We refer to this number as molar gas volume. I'm going to enclose it in um, something rectangular like this. Very important so you take note of it, okay? One mole of a gas occupies a volume of 22.4 dm cube or 22,400 centimeter cube. And then the table of this conversion factor is also important. In general, molar mass of a substance is equal to Avogadro's constant and it is equal to one mole. I think we encountered this relationship in previous classes as well too. And now take note, that one mole for a gas is equal to the molar gas volume at standard temperature and pressure, which has the value of 22.4 dm cube, as I mentioned earlier. We are not set to pick questions and solve using the knowledge we've established already. But before then, I'd like to state, if you've not learned how to balance a chemical equation, what is holding you back? Please, you can visit our previous videos or read through the GMAS 41's notes on balancing of chemical equation because we need this in the study of stoichiometry. Once you want to enjoy calculations here, then you need to know how to balance chemical equations. I'll be teaching you calculations on mass mole volume relationship. That's about stoichiometry of a reaction. We've got this very first question here on the back. I'd like to read it. Calculate the number of moles of calcium chloride that can be obtained from 25 grams of limestone, CaCO3. Limestone is calcium trouser carbonate 4. In the presence of excess hydrogen chloride. Did you get a question? We are to calculate the number of moles of calcium chloride that we can get from limestone. So we have business with calcium trouser carbonate 4 here, which is the limestone, and we have business with calcium chloride. It is the number of moles of calcium chloride that we are to calculate. But you know that what is producing the calcium chloride is limestone, which is calcium trouser carbonate 4. So these two compounds are our focus in this question. However, how do we obtain this calcium chloride from limestone? Here we are told that it is in the presence of excess hydrogen chloride. 
That simply means that hydrogen chloride is going to react with limestone, calcium trouser carbonate 4. And then in the reaction, we expect that calcium chloride will be obtained in the product. Hence, we will write the reaction equation. Is that okay? So I'll write the equation for the reaction. Equation for the reaction. This is the reaction between calcium trioxocarbonate 4. It's a solid, which is limestone. It's going to react with excess hydrogen chloride. This is aqueous. Aqueous, all right? Now, let us see the product that we are going to get. You come to this. We have a metal which is positive here, a metal ion which is positive. That's calcium. It's going to react with a negative ion from here. And the negative ion in this hydrogen chloride is chloride ion. Now, if calcium is reacting with this chloride ion, we expect to get calcium chloride. Please visit our video on valency and you'll see how we can be able to write the correct chemical formula of a compound. I've taught you that from previous classes already. So we expect to get calcium chloride. And the correct chemical formula of calcium chloride is CaCl2. Is a solid. Is a solid. Then plus. We have carbon, oxygen left, and then hydrogen from here. This oxygen will react with hydrogen to give us water. And you know that the correct chemical formula of water is H2O. I'll put liquid. Now we are left with carbon and two oxygens. The carbon and oxygen will react to give us carbon peroxide, CO2. This is a gas. I've written the chemical equation, the products that were formed, and I wrote the correct chemical formula of the product. But I don't know if this reaction is balanced here, so let us look at it. In the product side, calcium is 1. In the reactant side, rather, in the reactant side, calcium is 1. In the product side, calcium is also one atom there. Carbon is one in the reactant side, and carbon is one in the product side. Oxygen is three in the reactant side. Let's look at the product side. In water, we have one atom of oxygen, and then in carbon peroxide, we have two atoms of oxygen. If you add one to two, you get three of oxygen in the product side, so it balances. Let's come to hydrogen. Hydrogen is one atom in the reactant. In the product, it is two atoms, so we need to do some balancing. All right? Then chlorine is two atoms in the product side, but in the reactant side, it is one. So you see clearly, hydrogen is two in product, chlorine two in product. In the reactants, hydrogen and chlorine is one, one. So clearly, we are meant to put two here to balance it out. But remember, when I taught you balancing of chemical equation, you can choose to find out by solving. So let me just do a quick one here. If I said, okay, hydrogen is one, in the reactant side and two in the product side, you will now have to add an unknown in the side that has fewer number of the atom, which is X that I've put here now, you know. Then I'll do X mode times one atom of hydrogen in the reactant. We have X times one. I'm working for hydrogen now, okay? X times one in the reactant will now be equal to, in the product side, one atom of hydrogen times two, or one mole of hydrogen rather times two atoms. You have 1 times 2, and then x will give us 2. So do you see clearly that this x is equal to what? 2. I'm going to write 2 there for you to see. I'm using blue marker to show that we did a balance in there. And you see that automatically chlorine balances. Because whatever number that affects hydrogen will also affect chlorine in hydrogen chloride. Because the valency of hydrogen and chlorine is 1, 1. You know, please visit valency uh, video or the notes to refresh your memory on this. Now that I've done this, I'll now focus on the two compounds of interest. One of them is this limestone, and the other is calcium chloride. We have to determine the number of moles of calcium chloride that this limestone, 25 grams of limestone, will produce. So I can write out the stoichiometry of these compounds. But before then, let me just bring out the two compounds of interest. We have calcium trouser carbonate 4 giving us calcium chloride. Now, the stoichiometry. The stoichiometry is simply 1, 1 mole ratio 1. 1 mole ratio 1 mole. What do I mean by that? If you look at the reaction equation, you notice that limestone or calcium trouser carbonate is 4. 1 mole of it is what produced 1 mole of calcium chloride. That's the meaning of the 1 mole is to 1. Is that okay? Now, let us visit our question back. 
calculate the number of moles of calcium chloride that can be obtained from 25 grams of limestone. Did you take note that the unit of the value of limestone given to us in the question is in grams? Therefore, the mole of this calcium trouser carbonate 4 in this stoichiometry, I will change it to gram. Now, by standard, according to the stoichiometry, one mole of limestone, calcium trouser carbonate 4, will give us one mole of calcium chloride. So let us convert this one mole to molar mass of calcium carbonate so as to get the value in gram. All you have to do there, calcium is 40, you add carbon, which is 12, then you add 16 times 3 for oxygen. Exactly how you calculate molar mass. We've done that in our previous classes. If you do that, you're going to get that 100 gram of calcium trouser carbonate for that is limestone will now give us equal to 1 mole of calcium chloride. 1 mole of calcium chloride. 1 mole of calcium chloride. Again, this is the standard. This is the stoichiometry. We know that 100 gram of calcium trouser carbonate 4 will give us 1 mole of calcium chloride. Therefore, 25 gram will give us what? 25 gram of limestone. How many mole of calcium chloride will it give to us? Do you know the reason why I did not convert the mole of calcium chloride to gram, just like I did to that of limestone? I did not convert this mole of calcium chloride to gram because the question is we should calculate the number of moles. So for calcium chloride, we are still looking for moles, so no need of converting to gram here. Why I converted that of limestone to gram, 100 gram, that is because the number given to us in the question for limestone is in gram. If in the question we are asked to calculate the number of mass, the mass of calcium chloride that will be obtained, then I will have to convert the mole of calcium chloride to mass using the molar mass. Okay, now here I would say it implies that 25 gram of limestone calcium trouser carbonate 4 will give me, I don't know, question mark. I do not know the number of moles of calcium chloride that can be obtained from it. That is what I'm looking for. At this point, I will do cross multiplication. Let me show you. You do cross multiplication, something like this. If you like this question mark, you can say, let us call it X. Say, so, okay, let 25 gram of limestone produce X mole of calcium chloride, and then solve for X. If you cross multiply, but first you see that this gram and this gram will go off. All this will go off. So if you do your cross multiplication, you will see that 25 grams, 25 gram of calcium trioxocarbonate 4 will now give us 25 times 1. 25 times 1 mole. 1 mole of calcium trioxocarbonate. That is calcium chloride, brother. Then divided by 100. Divided by 100. You know, if you have done 100 times, say this is x now, equal to 25 times 1. Solving for x, x will be equal to 25 divided by 100. You know that. That's what we are doing there. Okay, so uh, in conclusion, let us find the value of this. 25 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.25. So this is equal to 0 0.25 mole. Therefore, 25 gram of calcium trouser carbonate for limestone will produce 0 0.25 mole of calcium chloride. And this is our answer. So you can see very simple. Now, let me summarize something here, okay? Because this calculation is a simple one. It is just like somebody saying that one biscuit is sold for 10 naira. Therefore, buy three biscuits. How much do you think that three biscuits to be so, uh, sold? To be sold for 30 naira. And how do you know that it's 30? In one of our previous classes, I've shown you how to interpret that mathematically. And that's what, what I did here. Are you following, right? Very simple. From the stoichiometry, one mole is equal to one mole here, which means 100 gram of calcium carbonate will give us one mole of calcium chloride is a standard. Is a standard. Just like saying that 100 gram will produce one mole. Therefore, 25 grams of that limestone will now give us, we don't know. Cross multiplying is solved. We're going to look at yet more questions on this. We don't have this second question 
the traits. What mass of lead 2 trials on nitrate 5 would require 9 grams of lead 2 chloride on adding excess sodium chloride solution? Now, previous question number one already gives us guideline on how to solve problem involving mass mole volume relationship. Like I stated, it's a simple one. Always be guided. If this is equal to that as a standard, what will be the value of the other? All right, so with that knowledge, we're going to solve this question quickly in no time. Are you ready? The first thing we have to do is to write the reaction equation, the balanced chemical equation for this reaction. And if you look at this, what mass of lead 2 trousal nitrate 5 would require 9 grams of lead 2 chloride on adding excess sodium chloride? So the reaction is between lead 2 trials and nitrate 5, PbNO3, then 2. This is the correct chemical formula of lead 2 trials and nitrate 5. To remind yourself of how to write the correct chemical formula of a compound, I urge you to visit our previous classes on valency, radicals, and writing of correct chemical formulae of a compound. This is going to react with sodium chloride. Sodium chloride here is a solution, so it's aqueous, and then this is solid. Right. What is going to be the product? Let's find out. Now, the positive ion from this lead 2 trials nitrate 5 is going to react with the negative ion from this sodium chloride. Of course, lead is positive here, so it's going to react with chloride ion here to give us lead 2 chloride, PBCl. Now, the correct chemical formula of lead 2 chloride is PBCl2, so you put 2 here. And this is aqueous because this reaction is taking place in the solution now. We are going to have another product here. This NO3 is a negative ion. Remember when I treated radicals of NO3 to NO3 minus, okay? So it's going to react with a positive ion from here, which is sodium, and that is going to give us NaNO3, sodium trioxonitrate 5. This reaction is not balanced, so we're going to balance it before we proceed to look at its stoichiometry. Sodium is 1 in the reactant here and 1 in the product, okay? Seem like it's balanced. Chlorine is 1 in the reactant but 2 in the product, so we have to balance up. You cannot come and step down the 2 here for chlorine, you can do that. Because the normal correct chemical formula of sodium chloride is written like this. You can only put number of moles behind. So you see now that chlorine is balanced, but sodium is not being affected. Sodium is 2 in the reactant, but 1 in the product. So what do we do? We come here and put 2 here. Once again, you cannot write the 2 as atom here after the sodium, because normally sodium trousal nitrate 5, this is the correct chemical formula. So you can only put number of moles behind. Alright, if you look at this, I guess everything is now balanced. Nitrogen is 2 in the reactant. This 2 is affecting everything in the brackets. And it's also 2 here. This 2 mole is affecting everything in this compound. Oxygen is 6, 3 times 2 in the reactant. And in the product, 2 times 3, 6, 6. So it balances. And hence, let us now move on to what our business is in this question. We have business with lead 2 trousal nitrate 5 and lead 2 chloride. So let me just uh, bring them out. I'm going to start them here, and then I'll bring out what we have business with, which of course is PbNO3, and then uh, 2 outside, producing lead 2 chloride. Now looking at this stoichiometry, this clearly tells us that you have 1 mole of lead 2 nitrate producing 1 mole of lead chloride. Now if you look at this question, we are asked, what mass? So we need... To express something in the unit of mass, which is gram. What we have here already is in mole. Now, going further, would require 9 gram of lead 2 chloride. So, do you see that the lead 2 chloride is still in gram, mass unit? Is that okay? So, I need to convert this to grams. And hence, I need to rewrite this number of moles in molar mass values to get it in grams. So, what is the molar mass of lead 2 trousal nitrate 5? Let's find out. You can actually calculate it from here. Lead is 207, but I like to start from here. Nitrogen is 14. That 14, add it to oxygen 16 times 3. So 14 plus 16 times 3, it gave me 62. We're going to multiply it by these two outside, times 2. 124, then add it to lead. The RAN of lead, relative atomic mass is 207. So if I add that to 207, then I have 331 gram 
all right, produces lead chloride. Chlorine is 35.5 renewals. So we're going to multiply by 2. I'm getting the molar mass now. And then add it to 207. So this gave me 278 gram. So from the stoichiometry, this is what we expect. 331 gram of lead, 2085, requires 278 grams. Therefore, what mass of lead 2035 would now require 9 gram of lead 2 chloride? Alright, we pro proceed in doing the calculation. I would answer a question mark under that lead 2 nitrate will now require 9 gram. 9 gram of lead chloride. This question mark, I don't know. Are you following? And so that's what I'm going to look for. Remember the general approach. 331 gram is equal to 278 gram. Therefore, what gram would give you 9 gram of lead 2 chloride? That's the idea. Of course, once you get to this, you know the next thing is to cross multiply and make x subject of the formula. In conclusion, can I say it implies that 9 gram of lead 2 chloride requires Okay, or 9 gram of lead 2 chloride will be equal to, you do a cross multiplication, it's going to be 9 times 331, 9 times 331, and then divided by 278, divided by 278. If you work out this, we're going to get 9 times 331 divided by 278, and this gave me 10.7 gram. In conclusion, Coming to what we have here, can I say that 10.7 gram of lead 2 nitrate, lead 2 nitrate requires, requires 9 gram of lead 2 chloride. And that is our answer.